real estate is about freedom, choice freedom, time freedom, and money freedom, and the impact you can make with that freedom. But it doesn't come without cost. Your freedom takes work. That's why Neil Timmons brings together the tools you need to build your real estate legacy, from tips and tricks to interviews with industry titans. It's all here in one place. Real Grit. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome to Real Grit. I'm Neil Timmons. Hey, I'm excited that you're here today. Um, we've got a great, a great guest, a good friend of mine. He hails from Tennessee. He's been involved in 250, 300 plus uh, wholesales plus fix and flips. He's got a, a hundred plus units that he's got owned. Um, and he hasn't been in this business very, very long. So it's going to be a really fun story. So, uh, Marcus Kurth is here from, uh, from Tennessee. Marcus, how you doing, buddy? Good, yeah, man. Yeah. Happy to be here. I know we always have good conversations on our masterminds. So yeah, looking forward to this one. No, I mean, I'm excited. It's, uh, it's good to catch up with you. Now, we were just talking, you know, Tennessee is interesting in the sense that it's broken down into to multiple quadrants. There's probably three, right? Yeah. So I'd say, you know, you got the kind of the west, middle and east Tennessee. Um, east Tennessee would be Knoxville. Middle would be Nashville. It's where I live and uh, run our business out of. And then you have uh, Memphis, which is a little bit of a cheaper market. And that's where yeah. we predominantly uh, decided to build our portfolio. So yeah, you got it. Three sectors. It's unique. It's interesting uh, just given that you're in all of them and each market is kind of uniquely different in terms of what you might do in the market. Definitely. Yeah. Well, let's do this before, before I jump too far into to Tennessee in and of itself, just tell me, everybody's got a unique story. How did you even get into this business? Sure. Yeah. I'm actually from Southern California. I uh, grew up there 24 years. I uh, went to school there and I found myself after college, I was in a cubicle and I was making cold calls for a big corporate company and kind of looking around and I was with young people and I uh, should have been really enjoying the job. And, and frankly, I didn't. So I started reading books, found Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki, found out about real estate and realized and started looking around and saw a million dollar homes in California, which didn't cash flow. Right. So ultimately, you know, I found a market where a couple of buddies of mine went to join the military as officers, which was Clarksville, Tennessee. Mm. And I quit my job and moved out there in my truck and started flipping houses. And that was about four years ago and done well since then. So it's been quite a journey. Four years ago. That's it. Four years ago, four and some change. And you've been involved with your, at this point, almost 500 different homes, 500 different properties at this point. Close to, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But tell me, you know, before I get into the business too far, I guess, well, that was like early on. What did your first deal look like? You know, how do you just pick up, move across the country? And all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to start flipping homes. Sure. I mean, I guess the short answer is slowly, uh, very <laughs> slowly, right? It doesn't happen over time. And everything is exponential growth curve um, in business and learning. And the more you learn, the faster you go. So um, it's kind of like the saying where you're pumping a bucket. At first, you're pumping the bucket and no yep. water comes out, no water comes out. Right. Eventually, you get a couple of drops and eventually you get a stream, right? It's kind of where we are now is the stream. But I mean, it's pretty fruitless for the first year. I mean, I was pretty much spinning my wheels and completely uh, driving for dollars. I did a flip and it took me six months and I was managing the contractors. They all robbed me left and right. And I made $5,000 in six months. You know, I completely was getting... My butt kicked, right? Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, my first kind of piece of advice is is get a mentor. You know, the books and the podcasts are amazing, super yeah. motivating, different bits and pieces of stories that you can take value from. But at the end of the day, having a mentor is one of the most important things. So, yeah, slowly first uh, flipped my first house, um, then got the mentor, started working for him as a sales rep, and kind of learned from there, and eventually started my own company. It could have been easy to, to quit and bow out, especially in those first six months. What, I mean, what even kept you going? Absolutely. hundred um, percent. There was times I wanted to quit, but you know, a lot of it was didn't want to go home with my tail between my legs. Yeah. Um, a lot of salt and vinegar with in respect to that, wanting to make things like that. And um, it's ultimately financial freedom was the only thing that I really wanted out of life. I mean, I could go back to that cubicle where the numbers don't make sense, right. where I'm making maybe $65,000 a year. You get taxed, especially in California, right. 9% state tax, and you're taking home maybe 15. Like how do the numbers make sense to have financial freedom? So to me, it was uh, sink or swim and there was nothing else that I really wanted. So I was going to keep pushing no matter how little money I make and how long it took. What's your team structure look like today? 
Yeah, our team, we have a disposition agent. I have uh, four sales reps underneath me who I train, uh, two construction crews, um, my all-star partner, James, he's in Memphis, mm -hmm. and um, some ancillary partners that we work with, but that's, that's pretty much the core team. What's a culture like for you guys? I mean, it's a results-based business. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, we come in, everybody's got to bring something to the team. Um, going back to the company I worked for, I mean, I could have slacked off or my coworkers could have slacked off and it wouldn't affect the company whatsoever. Uh, but since we're, we're effectively a team, everybody's got to pull their weight. So it's a lot of entrepreneurial work where they're entrepreneurs within our company mm. are able to buy properties from us and we want them to buy properties so they can continue to excel and build their net worth. Yeah. So I'd say it's, it's very a strong team dynamic and just kind of helping each other out with the understanding that you have to bring something to the table and that you need to produce results in order to be kind of a part of the team. Yeah. So it's, it's a fast paced environment, but it's rewarding if, if you can work it. Yeah. You've got a partner. How did you guys, uh, how'd you guys even meet? Sure. Yeah. So I met James on Instagram, uh, October of 2019. Funny, right? I was waiting for you to say match.com. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Partnermatch.com. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right? Real yeah, estate, where real estate partners can that. act. Yeah. All right. So you found an Instagram and how were you just, were you searching for something? He find you what, what happened there? Yeah. I was searching for someone to help me scale the business. Oh, I, right. I knew ultimately that scaling, you know, not being a one man shop yeah, right. anymore was, was, is the answer, right? right. Not only yeah, yeah. Business, but the business in general. So yeah. uh, I was making money, but it was, I was doing all the work. Right. So uh, James Jones in Memphis heard him through the grapevine, you know, and he was doing well. He's got a scaled business. I said, hey, like I'm in Nashville. You're in Memphis. You know, let's partner 50 50. You take half the business. I'll do majority of the work or you help me with whatever you want to do and teach me how to scale this thing. And, you know, now we're a seven figure company looking to do multiple seven figures this year. So it worked out. It was a great DM. It ultimately uh, was a great DM. <laughs> The most profitable one yet, right? right definitely. Yeah, yeah. So you guys start by on the buy and hold side, or you guys start on the fix and flip side. We started on the fix and flip wholesale. So okay. that was 2020. We got yep. a little office here in Nashville and just, you know, built the team, sales guys hitting the phones, the whole yep. nine yards. What's the biggest challenge along the way from start to today? It's a great question. Um, obviously there's so many challenges along the way. Um, for me, the biggest one was learning how to sell and become a, a salesperson and get on the mm. phones. That's, you know, obviously the gasoline of any business is sales and bringing revenue into the company. Nothing else can exist without revenue right. and money coming in. And to me, that's sales. So I was uncomfortable on the phone starting off. It was difficult. I didn't want to call people. It's, it's a tough job, right? Especially starting out, but you just continuously do it over time and it becomes second nature. Yeah. So that was the hardest hurdle for me was, was obtaining that skill. And once you have that skill, there's, you can teach it to other people yep. how they can do it. Now you're scaling a business. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's truly just invaluable, but definitely for me, that was the hardest challenge. Where'd you learn that from? I'm talking the skill, not, not the, not the intestinal fortitude to make the next phone call, but the skill sure. to actually sell. Yeah. So after I, I was making, um, I made 5,000 on that flip and it took me six months. I, I basically just started. I was selling for a guy who basically helped me build my career. His name's Polly. And I sat in a chair and was hitting the phones. He's taught me the sales script. He taught me how to go on appointments with sellers. He taught me the whole nine yards. So ultimately it was, it was working for a mentor yep. um, before I was able to go off and start my own company. How long were you with him for? 13 months. 13 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Hey, tell me if you were, if you were to start again, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? I'd cut to the, I'd cut straight to obtaining the skill money and salary. doesn't matter. In my mm. opinion, how much you're making doesn't matter. It's kind of who you're becoming yeah. with the organization or the actions you're taking every single day is it's incredibly important because obviously the more skills you obtain, the more value you can provide and money you can make. So instead of thinking, you know, I thought I was so smart. I was a college graduate. And it's just, it's just flipping homes, right? It's, there's nothing to it. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go out there and kill it in Tennessee. Yeah. Right. I completely hit a brick wall. I had no idea what I was doing. Completely yeah. different skill set than college, which didn't help me at all, frankly. Yeah. And I would just, you know, be a little bit more humble, be a little bit more understanding of the situation 
and go straight to the mentor and, you know, work for whatever percent you're going to get. You're not going to make all the profit. You're not going to make all the money, but what you're gaining, what you're becoming as a person is so much more valuable than that. So just go ahead and be humble and find that person and do whatever it takes to get those skills. Um, and don't worry about the money. That's, that's my advice. What I heard you say is add value, fi find somebody you want to be like, really. Sure. It, sure. who's got a business, who's got, who's got something that you really envy and would like to get there, figure out how to add value to them and plug in somehow, any which way you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it has to be a hundred percent a two way street. I mean, my Polly and I are really good friends. We still do deals to this day. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just add value, add value, add value, because at the end of the day, nobody's going to help you if you're not helping them. It's absolutely got to be a two way street in business. Yeah. Talk to me about um, business today. Where are things right now? You've got a bunch of, a bunch of rentals, nearly a hundred rentals at this point. Right. Um, may, maybe talk to me about specifically that, that portfolio. Uh, when did you sure. buy your first rental and, and where are you guys at today? And what's, you know, what's management of that like for you guys, sure. or maybe specifically for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been a mountain definitely, but uh, worth it. You know, we attained the goals that I initially set out when I quit my job, which is, you know, financial freedom, which yeah. always sees a certain amount of money per month. Um, so about 18 months ago, I think June, uh, it was in the summer, we bought our first rental and we scaled from there while simultaneously uh, growing the wholesale business. So in about 18 months, we bought 101 units. Um, did wow. a lot of construction to all of them. Uh, James is just a monster of a rehabber, multiple crews yep. in Memphis, um, just a complete, you know, he's a, he's a beast. So he's rehabbing five, six houses at once, you know, we're buying, continue to buy, and then we'd refinance. So hard money, low, uh, short-term debt, and then mm -hmm. refinance on a long-term debt and then fixing them up as we go along. So, um, we just refinanced, I think two or three weeks ago, our last portfolio of 14, because we'd refi in, in uh, packs. Do them in chunks. We financed our last 30, yeah, on a 30-year debt. So that's all stabilized and ready to rock and roll. So that was a, definitely a big sprint, but um, definitely fruitful. So if you've got 101, what's the unit, what's the makeup there? How many single family homes? What, what apartments? Yeah. What, what's that look like roughly? So we bought a six-unit apartment, a 10-unit apartment, a 14-unit apartment, and the rest of them are single family homes. Wow. with maybe a couple of triplexes and duplexes thrown in the mix. Got it. A lot of single families then. A lot of single families. Yeah. 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 What's been the biggest uh, challenge or learning curve going through, you know, acquiring, you know, just it's one thing to fix and flip a property. It's another thing to fix it, tenant it and manage it times 101. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a ton of, of learning curve to go through there. I think the biggest one is capital structure. Mm. Um, so we go off and buy these properties. It needs to be, most people won't loan you 100% of the money, right? Right. They want you to have skin of the game, 10% down. So you, what you really need to do is have a plan going into this property in order to scale it quickly of where the money is going to come from. So frankly, in my opinion, I wish we it would have been better to move a little bit slower, but we ultimately pulled it off. But to obtain a capital structure where you can get hundred percent financing and go one property at a time is yeah. much better because sometimes we would have to use our wholesale flip business profits to, you know, kind of match that 10% that the hard money lenders typically want you to put down. Yep. So now we're, you know, taking a little bit of money from this other business. So this one's not as strong and that's not fair to that business. Right. So we want to keep everything separate. So keeping the capital structure intact and hundred percent financed, is the most important thing in my opinion. And that's, that's kind of the big learning lesson in terms of scaling how to grow a rental portfolio. How'd you decide what to put in the portfolio on the buy and hold side versus fix and flipper versus wholesale? Or are they completely different assets or coin toss? What, what is that like? I'd say that everything in Nashville would be a kind of a revenue based hmm. model because the properties are maybe 250 to 350,000. So as you know, it's not as good of cash flow yeah. for a lot of the properties so we're buying. When you say revenue based, you mean now money. So wholesale, fix and flip. Correct. It's not, it's not getting to, held. Okay. Absolutely. We need to make sure everybody's, you know, making money. The sales guys are getting paid. Yep. The office is getting paid for. There's profit there in that particular company. And then on the other alternatively, on the hold side, it's pretty much everything in Memphis. The properties are a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. They're cheaper properties just overall. Yep. And they rent for a certain amount to where, let's say, just for a quick example, maybe you can cash flow three hundred dollars per property in memphis you'd only cash flow 150 
So obviously our goal is cash flow. So Nashville became the revenue based model and Memphis became just the cash flow. So pretty much everything in Memphis we held. Now this year you're you're very heavily focused on the fix and flip and the wholesale business to grow that, probably to stack some cash to then go back in and, and buy some more rentals. Absolutely. What are you doing from an action standpoint that looks a little different from from last year in order to grow that business? Right. So we're heavily investing in in people. That's something that we learned the last couple of years. I was doing a lot of helping with the closing of the deals. I was involved with that because we were training guys from the ground up. Yep. Um, now we're investing in salaries. We're paying, you know, much more. We want our guys to each make a hundred thousand dollars per year. Uh, we're really focused on getting the top talent that the market can provide. Yeah. And obviously you have to pay for that. Right. So we're looking to shrink our team mm. and just have a more valuable team. Level up. Absolutely. Um, and in conjunction with that, just the addition of the novations, which you and I have talked about pretty right. extensively over the last few months. So we're adding that to the mix as well. So we're hoping that's going to help us when it, it's already proven that in just the last month. Oh, that's great. The idea being that plays out in Nashville and the little higher end stuff in compared to Memphis, for example. Sure. It's just higher price properties, higher mm -hmm. margins. And we would like to keep, you know, have a small portfolio here here in Nashville yep. from yep. an appreciation standpoint, predominantly, you know, sell as much as we can and keep the wheels turning and make sure our portfolio is stabilized. And then we'll continue to have another round of buying. Yeah, no, that's great. Tell me about, as you look forward down the line, you know, a year, two, three years, where's the business headed? Where are you headed? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, want, I would love to have this flipping wholesaling business completely automated, stabilized, where, you know, people within the business are making over a hundred thousand dollars. Everybody's fed, everybody's happy. And that doesn't take much of my time. Yeah. I'm always going to be continuing to buy real estate as you know, we both know for tax purposes, as right. long as the, as well as the cash flow and all the other great things that come along with buying real estate. And then, uh, I think that's going to take me one or two years to accomplish. And then I'm looking to buy a multifamily real estate. So hundred units, 150 units. I work with a coach kind of, uh, doing what I suggest to myself, which is don't take the long route, hire a coach immediately when you're looking to get into a new industry, which for me was multifamily real estate. Yeah. So I ended up hiring a coach and we worked together and we analyzed deals. So kind of pegging myself for the next couple of years to, to make the jump into that when the time uh, presents itself. You'd say it's fair to say, you know, wholesale is not the same as fix and flip. Fix and flip is not the same as buy and hold. Buy and hold um, two units or four units or 12 units is not the same as buying larger apartments, right? All those it's, things, all those things are different. Sure. Absolutely. And, you know, from on a paper, it kind of seems like it would be relatively similar, right? Correct. But you dive into it and you can't believe how, what seems like such a small shift is a completely different world and different skill sets. Um, not to say that there's not some skill sets that transfer across there absolutely Correct. is, Right. but jumping between just those small jumps, seemingly small jumps, uh, it's, it's quite, it's quite amazing uh, when you finally get into it. So um, if you're going to do that, I guess I would say is, you know, to your listeners is make sure you have time allocated and don't think it's going to be easy because it's going to take time. It's going to take a learning curve and you want to make sure what you initially built is established before you go ahead and, and make that jump. Be patient. Yeah. yeah. Build that cash cow, put the, put the processes and procedures in place so it can, so it can run like a business, which is what it is. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, let's do this. I want to move on to a uh, final segment, what I call for, for impact your favorite quote. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Mm. Why is that so impactful for you? Um, I just, I think it's one of the best things out there just because I mean, it's not going to change. It is what it is. Yeah. The competition in the real estate market, the competition in the technology market, the competition in any market, it kind of is what it is. There's nothing that you can necessarily do to change it. But if you can change yourself, then you're prepared for anything. I just think it's so encouraging and positive that, you know, frankly, you can just change yourself and become as successful or not successful as you want to be. It's on you. It really is empowering. Uh, what I like about it is it's, it implies total ownership. Right. You know, if you take it further, you wish you were better, it's just become better, right? Take responsibility for it, right? Sure. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, what do you think holds most investors back from hitting, you know, their personal next level? 
Um, are these investors that are already in the market or? Yeah, let's to- yeah, let's say they're in the market and just, you know, I'm going to call it their personal next level, whatever that is. If it means somebody like sure. you going to multifamily or somebody, you know, wants to bridge from being a wholesaler to get into fixing and flipping, whatever their personal next level is. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think I've seen this in my own career. It's like you get so you're so excited and you're motivated. You want to you know take on the world, so to speak, but it's just be a little bit patient, you know, make mm. sure you're checking a box and you're, and you've accomplished a certain thing in one lane before you jump onto the next one. It's like, okay, maybe I've done five or six or 10 wholesales. Now I'm ready to fix and flip because, you know, you think that that's going to make you more money. Whereas if you just were patient, ultimately that would, that would be better suited to you. Mm. Um, so I think ultimately patience and mastering one thing before you move on to the next, you know, not doing that holds a lot of people back, including yeah. myself sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of real estate, what are you most passionate about? I love traveling. I'm um, trying to travel once a month, you know, four day weekend. Uh, we just got back from Mexico with our mastermind, which yeah. was an absolute blast. I yeah. uh, learned a ton uh, with, you know, high level people. So worth the time. And it was, it was an amazing time. So traveling, um, snowboarding and uh, hanging out with my family. That's Those cool. are kind of the things that I like to do outside of work. What's your favorite way to make an impact in the community? Well, I've, I've kind of been able to learn this skill set of, you know, buying properties and fixing and flipping. So um, helping others do that, helping my sales guys, um, looking to help them buy property this year. He was, he's 23 years old. He's, you know, had a job making 30 grand a year last year. Um, and now he's, you know, hopefully going to make a hundred grand and own a property. So that makes a small little impact in my world and his world and going to do that for the next couple of years and hopefully uh, bring it on a bigger scale in the future. It's cool to be able to make deep personal impact in people's lives like that. You bring them under your wing. Yeah, yeah, cool. Hey, uh, if if people want to follow you, connect with you, how can they do that? Where can they find you? Yeah, I think Instagram is the best for me. Shoot me a DM. Uh, My tag name is Marcus underscore real estate, I-N-V. And yeah, just shoot me a DM. Happy to jump on a call or answer any DMs and help in any way I can. Cool. Make sure we get that uh, linked in here in the the show notes. Listen, Marcus, I, I really appreciate you coming on and talking. It's a unique story, especially in under four years. You've been involved in hundreds and hundreds of, of homes. You got 101 under your belt and units owned. That is wildly impressive. In a, um, and I think it speaks to, uh, you said it a couple of times. I don't know if you give yourself enough credit because in order to get there, it had to require patience and laser-like focus. Otherwise, you just you, it'd be a tough time to, to get as far as you've gotten in the short period of time. So it's wildly Absolutely. impressive. Appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Thanks a ton. And we'll, we'll make sure we put the, the connection with you for Instagram in the show notes for anybody. So for everybody here at Real Grit, I'm Neil Timmons reminding you that real estate requires real grit. I'll see you next time. If you like our content and want more, you can access it at realgritpodcast.com. You hear it guest after guest. Instinctively, you already know it. But let me call it out. The most expensive action is inaction. The real estate market is full of opportunities. You just need to uncover them. You can build a business that lasts for years, makes monumental impact in the lives of those that you love. It's not just about business, but about the freedom you get because of it. Have you ever heard the saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I believe that partnering is essential. In fact, I partner with hardworking investors all the time. The point is that you can get a lot further with the right partner. Let me say it again, the right partner. If you've ever thought about partnering with anyone, or if you have a partner now, I encourage you to download my free Partner in Profit Guide, which includes the top five must-answer questions to evaluate a profitable partnership. You can find it at www.legacyimpactpartners.com. I'll see you in the next episode.